Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Dilip Khatri. I'm a structural engineer. I've been working in the wind energy industry for uh, 21 years. And today's topic we're going to discuss is fatigue analysis of wind tower, wind turbine generation concrete foundations. It's a rather significant topic because it affects every wind tower that exists in the world sits on a concrete foundation some type of foundation, spread footing, pile type, micro piles. And so the issue of fatigue is a critical issue. And we're gonna discuss a few topics on that. So the issue of why do a fatigue analysis? Number one reason is that crack failure is a big problem with concrete foundations, uh, particularly over a long period of time because concrete will cycle back and forth in compression in tension and in shear and this low cycle fatigue will cause cracks that it, that were that occurred during the pouring process to extend further and to get worse the second thing is that we design our foundations to last for 20 years but that is now being challenged because Many foundations are being repowered, repurposed, and they're expected to now last 40 years or more. And they're increasing the loads on these wind towers. They're increasing the, uh, the demand. And so even though we've researched this topic for concrete and steel under item three, we really haven't done any research as far as soil goes. And soil remains uh, one of the biggest unknown factors in terms of the performance of wind towers once you go past 30 years. Rock is probably the most predictable, but other soils such as clays and sands, softer soil conditions are much more unpredictable, especially if there is underground drainage issues and there's water, uh, which will change the soil characteristics. These are uh, very important factors that have not really been fully understood for this uh, wind tower industry. The concept of fatigue analysis applies to many different kinds of structures. Uh, there are, every industry has issues dealing with fatigue and it boils down to components as well. So there's a, kind of a schematic diagram there on the screen. We're focusing this discussion specifically on concrete foundations because that is what has specific emphasis to the wind energy industry. However, there are other areas of the wind towers that also are subject to fatigue, which are outside the scope of this presentation that deserve uh, fair attention as well, because anytime you have a mechanical device that's expected to last beyond 20 years, you're gonna have issues with fatigue, you're gonna have issues with cyclic stress. But today's focus, we focus on the foundation. That's our focus today. There are several points of uh, stress that occur in a wind tower foundation system that are subject to fatigue failure. In the steel tower, there are all of the weld connections. Those are highly susceptible to cracking and fatigue failure. All of the bolted connections are potential fatigue points of failure. The base plate connections to the foundation includes the base plate itself, the bolts that go into the foundation and the welds that are at the base plate. In the foundation itself, the concrete fatigue can happen in a variety of locations. There are several points in every foundation that are highly susceptible to uh, fatigue failure. There are also the pre or post tension anchor bolts, the post tension strands if it's a uh, foundation using uh, micro piles with uh, post-tensioned foundation systems, the shear cracking, and also the soil bearing pressure. There are, uh, one of the uh, challenges of the analyst, the engineer, designer, is to identify these points of failure and perform the analysis to see if there's sufficient steel and if there is sufficient capacity to provide service over a 20 year life. First step, in doing a fatigue analysis is to identify the critical stress zones or critical stress points in the structure. And that is where a finite element analysis comes in uh, 
and also a lot of judgment, a lot of engineering judgment comes into play because if you've seen foundations crack and how they fail, then you have a good sense of where the failure points are. So identifying those critical stress points and the tower critical stress points is step one. Then using the finite elements mo model, we can then link the stresses in those critical stress points to the demand loads, which are the overturning moment, the horizontal shear. Those are the demands that come from the tower. And we want to link those because when we get a fatigue spectrum, we're getting the fatigue spectrum for those applied loads. Then we have to convert those loads into critical stresses and then calculate them and do the analysis. That's the way the process works. So this is a sample uh, diagram from a pile cap foundation that I worked on where we have the applied loads, which are with the arrows. We have the post-tensioning load in the strands, which is the vertical arrow on the lower right. And that overturning moment is in the blue curved arrow. The anchor bolt loads are the two uh, up and down arrows, which are on the top of the cap. And then I've identified just schematically with the red box, the, with the dashed lines, the area of critical stress. And in that area, we identify the critical stress zones, and then we use the finite element model to convert the applied loads into actual stresses. And those stresses are essentially one of three components. There's a tension stress, a shear stress, and a compression stress. The shear stress is usually measured using a von Mises stress diagram. Uh, and the finite element model helps us to identify the areas of the highest von Mises stress. And then tension and compression stresses are done from the finite element model to calculate the areas of peak tension, which is where we're going to have cracking because concrete can't resist tension. So hopefully we have proper steel in those locations. And then we can size that rebar to make sure it's sufficient or if there's no rebar, we need to put rebar in those high tension zones. And the same thing for the shear. So the process is based on a lot of judgment, but also there is high level analysis and we do rely on the fatigue load spectrum that's given to us by the wind tower manufacturer. The fatigue analysis method by itself, which uses uh, the Palmgren minor rule is highly empirical. In other words, it's based on test data that's been done in a lab for each type of stress situation. So we're using formulas that are based upon testing. And based upon those tests, we produce an SN curve where the S is the stress on the vertical axis and N are the number of cycles to failure. And we apply a factor of safety to that. So you can see with this diagram schematically, we're showing the test points and then we use an actual design curve that's uh, recessed back with a certain factor of safety. The point is, is that not every circumstance has been tested, and we'll discuss this towards the end, where I'll point out specific situations that are not included in uh, current standard of practice, but are necessarily need attention because they do exist in the real world. But to develop those SN curves, that is coming from standard codes. Uh, the FIB code is one of the internationally well-recognized codes. And then, of course, there is uh, DNVGL, which has their SN curves. And we use those standards in order to do the analysis. So we're not, we're, we're effectively doing an analysis and then comparing it against a test situation that was done in a lab in order to see if it fits. So the uh, fatigue analysis protocol that we use in this industry was first published by Milton Miner in 1945. He developed the concept of the cumulative damage index, which is utilized today. And the, the rule is a fairly simple rule that we add up the cumulative damage per load cycle or per uh, bin, as we call it, per batch. And 
the sum total of all of those are the damage index, which must be less than one. And that's how we evaluate fatigue. And the capital N on the, on the uh, denominator denotes the allowable cycles to failure, and the small n in the numerator is the actual cycles, the actual demand load. And we are adding that up in order to see whether or not we have sufficient capacity to withstand fatigue. When we look at foundations that are beyond 20 years and say being used for repower, we need, a, we need to consider the fact that that foundation has already serviced for 20 years. Does it have enough capacity to service another 20 years? And that's one of the biggest issues that is prevailing in the industry today is evaluation of existing foundations, which requires quite a bit more analysis because it's not a new foundation, it's a foundation that has been there. And so as I mentioned in the previous slide, the, the protocol is very simple. It is the number of cycles that are applied divided by the allowable cycles to failure and making sure that that ratio is less than one. And that's checked for all the fatigue critical points and it's done using usually Excel software because the number of bins could be thousands of load cycle bins that would have to be checked. And the concept is very simple, but the data that we have to justify the number of cycles to failure is limited. And so I wanna be clear that as much as we try to use these existing tools, they have limitations to them. And I'll point out a few of those. So for, for our purposes, for designing new wind farms, we have data on a 20 year service life that's available. So that's our common practice. The area where we get into questionable predictions is once we go beyond 20 years where the analysis becomes questionable because we've ne really never verified or measured how wind towers are doing uh, that are repowered wind towers, repowered foundations, I should say. And that's where there's a limited amount of data. And so we're using analysis protocols that are not really intended to be used for that level of service life. And I know banks and financial institutions want credible forecasts for the lifespan of their investments. This is possible within the area of research and testing. So we have limited research and testing beyond the 20 year service life, but we're still conducting those analyses. And I wanna point that out in this presentation that uh, their reliability is somewhat questionable. So what are the big risk factors? Well, soil cycle fatigue is definitely a huge factor and is largely unknown. If, we if water gets introduced or changes the soil conditions, that will affect the foundation and it'll invalidate any fatigue analysis predictions because we're basing all of our predictions based on the soil at the time of construction. We account for water, we account for moisture, but if things change drastically, and a foundation experiences, you know, like a flood condition or it experiences an excessive snowstorm or freeze thaw cycle, something that's out of the spectrum of the original design, then this is a problem. And then, as I said earlier, beyond 20 years is where the analysis becomes questionable. There's very little, almost zero data on the performance of wind towers beyond a 20 year service life because no wind farm investor, operator, owner, wants their foundations to be measured or instrumented. And this is where we're missing a lot of information. And they, they usually, they don't wanna have it inspected because they just, they usually just wait until something breaks. And that is, that should be changed. And so I hope that the folks in the audience and the people that see this presentation will take this note seriously that we need to really monitor these foundations, especially when they go past 20 years, to see what's going on and to see how they're performing. So in conclusion, we are in a situation in this industry where we are very much lacking and need more research and test data on actual performance of wind towers and foundations to understand their structural characteristics not just within the 20 year service life, but especially beyond the 20 year service life. We definitely need more soils testing with regard to cycle fatigue. 
Again, as I said, there is little or zero information on this topic, and that's a huge topic for wind towers, which is largely unknown. And then when we get this new information, then the industry can upgrade their database and fatigue protocol methods to reflect the demands of the industry because the industry is growing, the repower market is growing, and the reliance on foundations is exceeding uh, what their original demand, the original design requirements were. So we're entering into a new era where foundations are expected to last longer they're expected to handle much larger loads. The towers are much taller. Much, the wind turbines are much heavier. So we definitely need more data and we certainly need to be able to monitor what's going on in the field because we have very little information uh, that's publicly available that can be published in that context. So I thank you all for your attention. Thank you for watching the presentation. I thank uh, uh, the Wind Energy Association for inviting me. I have my email address if you'd like to get a hold of me, uh, if you have any questions. And again, thank you all and appreciate your participation in this conference.